and empathy disconnected, cut off. The role of a child, that when they see a consciousness, you're operating at what we think of as theta. So you're going to be 15 to 30 cycles per second, 30 is on the stress side, but that's typically where you're going to fall. In alpha, you're going to be 7 to 14 cycles per second, 8 to 14 cycles, depending on the state. Now, alpha consciousness, for all intents and purposes, is, is a state of hyper-suggestibility. And it keeps people sedated. You know, they use them in prison. Televisions are used in prisons. It's cheaper than hiring more guards. Um, of course, people are going to be then told that it's okay not to just have one television, but to have three, four televisions in a house. And to be not watching it just on a normal television set, but on their phone and on their laptop. And you want to normalize this kind of crazy thing of people spending five, six, seven hours a day watching television. Television has been the ultimate tool of mind control. And for more than 60 years, children are set in front of it as a babysitter while they are bombarded with images of violence and decadence and corruption. And what it does is it just acclimates the child that when they see a real person dying on the street, they don't go over and aid them. We see this happening because, oh, that's entertainment. In fact, people now have been recorded laughing at someone hurt because it's just more entertainment. They've had their basic empathy disconnected, cut off. The role of advertising has certainly evolved away from one of utilitarian necessity in communicating the form, function, and value of a product. The application of the behavioral and psychological sciences has played a seminal role in the way corporations now sell products to consumers in American society and internationally. In 1921, after leaving Johns Hopkins University, John B. Watson, the founder of behaviorism, took a job with the J. Walter Thompson Company, and by 1928, he was vice president of the entire firm. Watson introduced new market research techniques into advertising and discovered that sales could be influenced by manipulating images associated with brand names. For instance, Blindfolded smokers could not tell the difference between brand name and generic. J. Walter Thompson remains one of the most powerful advertising agencies in the world today. Most people believe that you're going along through life making your own choices, making your own decisions, okay? You know, I decided to do this, I decided to do that, you know, I did that. By watching the brain live time, neural marketers today know exactly what product to place where, what, how to package that product, what colors you're going to respond to, what images you're going to respond to, what kind of pre-programming already exists that they can, they can couple it to. And so when you have a society where people are being told at every level to consume, to buy their way into happiness, um, and that's their only salvation, that's their only way into happiness, is to then, then you have like a, then you have what I call a kind of fundamentalist consumer society. How does that? How is that problematic? Why is that dangerous? Well, when you have people who only care about buying things, you're gonna you're gonna make people weaker um, in a lot of ways. So you're gonna certainly make them less self-reliant. And when they're told that you just buy things, buy your way into happiness, they don't realize that you can gain strength by doing a lot of things yourself. Okay? Um, you also uh, make people self-absorbed. I mean, the point of um, all advertising, which is the technology of consumerism, is, is to get people to um, care, you know, over-focus on every one of their needs and every one of their feelings. So if they're, if they're having a bad day, you know, they must focus on that and, 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 and focus on how depressed they are. Billions and billions and billions of dollars have been spent privately and publicly, looking at how to tap into your psyche, how to cause you to make choices that you wouldn't otherwise make, to do things that you wouldn't otherwise do, to consume, whether it's a product or a plant or a political platform. Uh, I've also asked the school board to make a part of every day some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message every day, every school, at every level. 
one thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. To me, with the media just willing to report whatever the government tells it to report, that that gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create for whatever purpose it wants to create a story for. And that's where we're at. That's why when you put on the 6 o'clock news and you switch from one channel to another, they take their, their commercial breaks at the same time, they tell the same news stories, and they tell the same news stories at the same time. But then you go to the Internet, you go to BBC out of London, or one of the other uh, foreign news services, and you see all kinds of news that we never hear about here. Mass media today is the cutting edge of psychological warfare, and it is nothing but a all-out assault against the general public. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. <coughs> Secure your copy today at InfoWars.com. We're back. I'm going to talk to James Lane and Richard Grove right now. How are the ideas of Huxley's ultimate revolution integrated into American culture? And I want to discuss the pharmacological control of the anti-authoritarian personality. And I want to talk about uh, what are the solutions to overcome the control. Well, the Huxley family was deeply into eugenics, and uh, Aldous Huxley was a famous 20th century writer who died the same day as Jack Kennedy, oddly enough. So when you look into his writings uh, about the utopias that they were trying to create, a uh, technotronic elite, uh, these ideas of the ultimate revolution that they would harness human beings and they would love their servitude through pharmaceutical methods and all these other things that he described back in 1961, these are really all reflections of MK Ultra. And so when you ask, who came up with these ideas of MK Ultra, like, that, that was an operational project. Whose needs was it serving? It's serving an elite class who's a predatory class. They're intraspecific kleptoparasites. They are of the same species, but they are preying on us. They are plundering our production, and they use knowledge, uh, the knowledge gap as a power gap, as a wealth gap, and that is the harness of control. Well, I think the pharmacological control is seen today. I mean, we've kind of got an amalgam of uh, Brave New World in 1984. And, I mean, Huxley, when you read Brave New World, I mean, this is what is happening today. I mean, they actually call one of the, the, the drugs now Soma. You know, I mean, it's like they're not even hiding that. That's and from Brave New World. Yeah. yeah. It is. And the whole agenda was laid out there. And uh, all you have to do is, uh, you know... Well, it's so like they're using 1984 as an instruction manual. And so now, if, if anybody goes in for anything, a, a kid is a kid, you know, we just called it daydreaming, you know, when I was a kid. Uh, now it's like they, they want to shove uh, ADD drugs down the throat. You know, anybody that goes in for the, the slightest thing, maybe you're having a bad day. Now all of a sudden you're diagnosed with this major disorder and, and the, the pharma, uh, big pharma is giving you drugs. Uh, they're funding hospitals to where they go in, and uh, if you want the money, well, you've got to push drugs as the only solution. Um, and I think that this is, you know, Huxley called it how many years ago? Unbelievable. Uh, let's go back to the clip here, of the final segment of the film, and we're going to have extras. I want to talk about solutions at the end, and then uh, intro some of these uh, extras, because I haven't seen these. Um, I've seen the film. I haven't seen the extras. You tell me how good they are. So intro these for myself and everybody else when we come back. Here's the conclusion of State of Mind. Secure your copy today at InfoWars.com. Cognitive dissonance occurs when individuals lack consistency in their methods of thinking. Inconsistencies. Oh, what the fuck does that mean? And thus, contradictory elements attempting to reside simultaneously as fact. Conflicts. Sounds like you live in a fantasy land. Like a dystopian, it's the dystopian mindset. Like, you are a lemming. That's what it means. Create frustration 
confusion, anger, and aggression. It is the difference between what you think the world is and what the world actually is. Cognitive dissonance is really, um, again, a fancy uh, psychologist term for, again, some common sense, which is this tension that people will experience when they have two opposing kind of ideas. The role of psychology in advertising is to create cognitive dissonance, or the conflict between what you have and what you want, and to fill that void by adapting your behavior accordingly in order to achieve your reward. If an entire society can be properly dosed with mind-altering but culturally approved drugs, this cognitive dissonance may be largely assuaged. With social control as their aim, the ruling class sought to expand their ability to influence the individual. Mind games, those of psychological warfare and advertising, you see, I called Alex Jones and I said, I said, I just want to ask you, like, do you think they would use psychological warfare? And he acted like he never heard that term. Even though I know he has, but... <clears throat> so I actually called in Alex on show once. Really not enough. The opportunity existed to employ chemical treatments physically affecting the hardware of the brain to complement the already existing harmful software in the form of effective propaganda and advertising. The tax-free foundations, including the Carnegie and Ford Foundations, followed the lead of the Rockefeller Foundation in the widespread funding of pharmacological solutions to social control. And they say, we will, we will uh, give you a million dollars for your medical school, if... I give up. <laughs> 